In this video, we're going to learn exactly how to calculate filament costs and as well as product costs for our 3D printing business and exactly how to save money while making more margin from our 3D printed products. So with that said, what I'm going to do is jump right into our computer, break everything down from start to finish, and as well as help you save money when it comes to selling your own products and designs online. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the computer and get started. So the first thing we're going to cover here is some of the biggest expenses that you'll have when it comes to selling 3D printed products. And this video is primarily for anyone who's either one, a complete beginner who wants to start transitioning from a hobbyist to a seller, someone who's already selling 3D printed products, but who's looking to maximize their profits or earnings, or someone who already runs a business or who already operates ones, but wants to incorporate 3D printing products into their catalog and or into their service um, resume. And uh, what I want to do here is kind of break down some of the biggest expenses you will have when it comes to running a business around 3D printing. The first one is filaments, which is hands down one of the biggest expenses you'll have, mainly because these are consumables. Second is electricity because you need electricity to power your printers. Third is labor. If this is any labor that you've hired from somebody or labor that you um, calculate yourself. Fourth is shipping, which is what you use to ship out products. Fifth is processing fees, which is the fees you pay to payment processors to process the transaction. And then lastly, miscellaneous expenses and unregulated costs. So these are the main expenses you will have within your business. And down here below, I provided a free worksheet that you can use. It's 100% free. You click on that. It's going to take you to a page that looks like this. On this page, this is the calculator that me and my students use to calculate our expenses within our business and see whether or not it's worth selling a printed product online. Here within this tab, it's divided into four different sections. You have your own site, Etsy, TikTok shop, and local events and shows. Additionally, to save this sheet, you can click on file, make a copy, and then go ahead and save it into your Google Drive. It's 100% free, I promise. Thank you for watching and just as a courtesy. So with that said, the main thing I want to cover here is the Etsy portion of this. And I'm going to break every single piece here down to the T as well as show you exactly how this works here on the right hand side. So here we have the main sections divided into four subsections. We have materials, electricity, labor, shipping, and Etsy fees. By default, the listing, processing, and direct checkout fees are set to 20% or 20 cents, 6.5%, and then 3%. This is the fees you can find on Etsy.com within their seller's handbook. So this is not fees that I made up. This is just what you'll find online. So the first thing I want to cover here, let's just say if you wanted to sell a 3D printed product. And here I have an example of some products that I um, want to use as, as an example. And let's just imagine we're selling just one. So I'm going to go ahead and take this as an example. Take this design. And uh, we slice it and kind of get the general idea of what it's going to cost to print something like this and kind of get the estimated cost per grams and as well as the hourly cost. So as you can see here, an item like this is going to take us about two hours to print and about 46 grams, 47 grams of filament to print this. And I do want to be clear. I'm not saying that this is a high margin product. This is not, not saying that this is a top seller or anything like that. It's just a hypothetical product that we're using for the sake of this video. So let's just say we're selling this 3D printed product. And what we need is these two main assets here, the grams used and as well as the amount of time it takes to print this. So with those values, we pretty much are pretty much set to start incorporating some data into the spreadsheet. So if we were to name this 3D printable barrel, That's the name of our product. And we can go ahead and start adding the values. For me, the cost per spool of filament is what you pay for one roll of filament. So if you go to Elegoo and you pay $12, it's $12. If you go to Bamboo and you pay $15, it's $15. For filament costs, it's the amount of filament you spent printing that product. You can find that within your slicer located here. Then from here, just type in the value. So it's 47 grams. And that will show up there. Next is the amount of grams of filament you get per spool. So on average, uh, the average for a spool of filament is around 1,000 grams. So if, unless you're running a print farm and you have the larger spools, for most people, it's going to be 1,000. Then lastly is additional expenses like lighting, threads, glue, PCBs, uh, any other thing that goes into developing the product and making it and piecing it together, that goes there. Um, for the sake of this video, to keep it simple, it's just $0. 
And by default, you can automatically see the material expenses are already at 71 cents just to print this one item. So from here, what we need to do is calculate the electricity costs. So we have the time to print in hours, which is about, it's about two hours just based off of the thing we saw. So two hours here, then the cost per kilowatt hour. And you can find this based off of the average within your area. So here within California, it's like 30 cents or so. So I'm just type in 30 cents. And then next we have the printer wattage. So from here, this varies and you can actually find the wattage within your printer. Usually on Google, if you type in like Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon wattage, the wattage is like, it spikes up to like 145, 150 or something like that. And then it kind of uh, stays at a baseline once the printer is printing. So for the sake of this, I think it's like 115 or something like that. I could be wrong, um, but every, every printer is different. So you will, would want to look at that and, or you can also buy a meter on Amazon. You can get a more accurate numerical cost or value. So you can see our material expenses shown here and as well as the electricity costs shown there. So by having these values, you have a pretty good uh, estimate as to what it's going to cost you to uh, develop a product and to print it and as well as to have it come out the machine. And that's kind of like what we're looking for when it comes to developing these products for our 3D printer. Next thing we need to cover here is the labor cost. So here it's mentioned optional. And the reason why it's mentioned optional is because if you're someone that has a job if you are, let's just imagine you're getting paid $30 an hour. Well, that means if you're getting paid $30 an hour and you're paying yourself $30 an hour from your business, that means you're already paying yourself a salary and or a wage and your business should be making profit for you to do that. And if it's not making profit, if it's, if you're just getting started, it makes no sense to calculate labor costs unless you really want to do that. It's up to you. But personally, I will not calculate it because your business is like something you need to start from the ground up. And as you build it, and then once it starts to get more sustainable, then you pay yourself till then don't worry about it. But if you're more an established business owner, you're actually making money and, or you have an employee, then you'll factor that in here. So let's just say in California, I think it's like $16. So I'll type in 16. Then the type to prep is basically the amount of time it takes for you to get the item off the build plate, put it in a box, put the thank you card, put the packaging protection, and then uh, putting it in a box and then wrapping it up and putting the label and ready to go and ship out, like ready to be shipped. That is the time to prep. So let's just say it takes you like three minutes, three minutes. So you can see my labor cost here is around 80 cents. Shipping, shipping supply costs. So for me, for mailers that I use, I've used boxes, I've used, uh, the bubble mailers. Um, and usually for me, I just use boxes since they're the ones that are most secure and I can fit more inside. So for me, it's around 65 cents per box, but for you, it can be different. And typically you're going to want to find the value or the amount when you buy it on Amazon or wherever you buy it. And typically it's the amount per unit or per cost, if that makes sense. So if you buy 25 boxes that are six by eight, and you buy it for $12, well, each box is about 50 cents before taxes and all that other stuff, right? So that's just an estimated amount. Next is shipping label costs. So here in California to ship domestically, that's around five to $6, just give or take. I would say right now it's a little less, but on average, when I was still shipping out stuff quite frequently, it was around 545. I would round this up to around six just to be safe because shipping costs do fluctuate. But unless the customer is paying for shipping, you don't have to factor this. But let's just in this scenario, just factor shipping just to be safe. Then you already have your listing fees. So we're already down 20%, 20 cents. We're also down 6.5% and 3% if they pay through direct checkout. So what you charge in a hypothetical world, let's just say if we were to charge $19.99. Well, that means Etsy takes $2.10 our total expenses are $10.32 and our total profit left over is $9.67. So you can find all of the expenses already pre-laid out here in addition to the profit shown here. And this is what you pay for when you're using a third-party platform like Etsy because although Etsy is a great platform for new first-time sellers, you are paying um, Etsy for their brand, for their image, for their traffic, for their authority, and for the security of that platform. And although that might sound nice, short-term, long-term, you wanna find a way to filter that traffic so that way you can save some money from the fees that you have to pay to them. So for example, within the Prince of Product program, we actually tell a lot of our students to actually sell on their own store rather on Etsy. And the reason for this is because if you sell on your own store, you have a lot more leverage in terms of the customer data, 
you keep the customer information and you also get to retarget customers and as well as, um, you know, not spend as much in fees. So for example, if we were to copy all of these values and paste it in here, and uh, we also set it up to 1999 as well, you can see our processing fees is 88 cents, total expenses is 910, and the profit here is 10.89 or $10.89, which is about almost more than a dollar difference in profit that you get to keep. And uh, truthfully, you know, what's my point with this? My point is that when you know how to calculate the expenses down to the cent, down to the dollar, or at least get a good ballpark as to what it's going to cost you to print something and then to mail it out, then you actually can start to know whether or not it's worth to print something and then to sell it online. Because not everything you can get your hands on when it comes to selling a 3D printed product is worth selling. And truthfully, once you know your numbers, everything about the business becomes much easier because at the end of the day, I can decide whether or not it's worth to actually sell this product for $10.89. Like, do is it worth me and the effort to package, ship, and prepare a product for $10.89? And that's up for you to decide with your products and what you sell. So if you're selling fidgets, flexies, toys, that means you're going to have to sell in volume because those products are notoriously known to be sold at much lower prices. But if you're selling functional products with some sort of intent, purpose, or design, then you're basically getting paid for some specific product that adds value. So if I would classify flexies, fidgets, toys, dragons as a value driven product, which means like, you know, basically people buy it because of the novelty or the emotion that might feel while someone buys a functional product or design purely off of function and or utility. And if you want to scale a 3D printing business, do you want to have a product that is worth your time? worth selling and as well as something that is scalable. So if you're selling something that, for example, that requires you to have like 50 plus printers with 50 plus AMSs and 50 plus colors, that's very difficult to scale without having a team in place. But if you only have a handful of products that are just one color, you really don't need that many machines to be successful and to reach the same level of volume as someone who's selling flexies and fidgets versus a regular design product that they just printed on their printer with one color. So that's my point. You know, this is just based off of the experience I've had with my students and what I've seen because all the top students that I have, they typically only have a handful of products, only a handful of colors, and they don't really offer too many products in terms of their catalog. So with that said, this calculator is 100% free for you to use. Feel free to mark it up, use it, design it, whatever, if you want to add some additional things. Additionally, I also did not include printer maintenance and uh, other miscellaneous things. Like some people might tell me that they really care about that stuff. And truthfully, in my personal opinion, if you're just getting started into the business, don't worry about that stuff just yet. Start thinking about that after you're making money. Unless you have a farm, then yes, you could factor that in. But truthfully, with 3D printers and where they are right now, there isn't a preset value or depreciation value on 3D printers. From what I've seen, Bamboo Lab printers tend to hold up their value pretty well, especially for what I've seen on Facebook Marketplace. But most people wouldn't buy a used printer. They typically would go for a new one because the sell value of these machines do hold up pretty well. But with that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe down below. If you are a complete beginner who wants to learn how to design your own models for 3D printing, we're hosting a 14 day challenge showing you exactly how to design your own models for 3D printing. It's available for everyone to join. Feel free to check it out with link in the description. Also, if you're a seller, designer, creator who's looking to turn this hobby into a business like what I've shown you here within this video, we've opened up slots to the Prince to Product program. If you're curious about that and actually want to turn this hobby into a full time income, whether you want to sell fidgets, flexies, toys, or design a specific product with some utility or intent. We show you exactly how to do that from start to finish within the program. I have a free training down below available for you guys if you want to sign up and check it out. But with that said, uh, go ahead and download the Google resource down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.